A double pendulum. When the angles are small, the motion's very simple. And if you give it a little bit of a nudge, that disturbance stays small. But give it a bigger swing, and the motion can get very complicated indeed. And a tiny difference in the initial conditions quickly becomes a completely different pattern. Small errors grow exponentially. The compound pendulum is a nice example of a class of systems that are inherently mathematically unstable, in that small errors get rapidly amplified. Here's a few more good examples of instability. Weather forecasters can predict a thunderstorm in an hour, the chance of precipitation tomorrow, and national weather systems next week. But next month, all they've got to work with is large-scale weather patterns and seasonal averages. Why is it so hard? Atmospheric science is pretty well known. Even if we can't predict next month's weather exactly, surely we can get pretty close. Well, it turns out long-range forecasting isn't possible, even in principle. In the 1960s, American mathematician and meteorologist Edward Lorenz was trying out a new computer weather model that predicted atmospheric conditions over time. And one day, Lorenz wanted more detail for a specific set of predictions. So he typed in the same initial conditions and ran his program again. Weird thing was, the original data and his new data began to diverge, a little at first, and then a lot. And after a short while, the two weather predictions were completely different. He realized that while the computer calculated to six decimal places, he'd inadvertently truncated the initial conditions to three decimal places. His starting point for the second computer run was off by three hundredths of a percent. But how could that make such a difference? Well, even though the mathematics was simple, the equations were non-linear, mixing the variables in such a way that very small differences became amplified very quickly. He'd stumbled over what became known as sensitive dependence on initial conditions. If you change the starting point by even a tiny amount, the system quickly evolves to a totally different state. Or, in the case of the weather, a tiny measurement error in the temperature today means your forecast for next month can be very wrong indeed. As Lorenz concluded, in view of the inevitable inaccuracy and incompleteness of weather observations, precise, very long-range forecasting would seem to be non-existent. Or, more poetically, it's the butterfly effect. The notion that the flap of a butterfly's wings in Brazil can set off a tornado in Texas. A famous example of structural instability is the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Completed in July 1940, it was the third longest suspension bridge in the world. But when it spectacularly collapsed just five months later, it became the go-to physics classroom example of the effects of resonance. The story goes, the high winds that fateful day were pushing the bridge at one of its resonant frequencies, and the vibrations grew and grew until the bridge failed and fell. Except that 70 years of research shows that it wasn't a simple case of forced mechanical resonance. It's a bit more complicated than that. See, a bridge can undulate end to end. Those are transverse waves. But it can also twist back and forth. It has torsional motion. Mathematical models of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge show that even on windy days, the transverse motion was damped and stable. And the high wind speed wasn't capable of driving it hard enough to fail. But the designers didn't know that the torsional dynamics were unstable. If enough energy flowed into the bridge, from the wind or by any mechanism at all, even the tiniest initial twist became amplified, exponentially blowing up into a catastrophic torsional wave. A valuable, if expensive, lesson in engineering instability. OK, so the double pendulum is chaotic, we can't predict the weather beyond a few weeks, and even bridges fall down from inherent instabilities. But at least the cosmos is dependable, right? I mean, the seasons come from Earth's orbit around the Sun, and that's stable, right? Well, not so fast, says science. It's true, Newton's law of universal gravitation predicts the Earth will follow a stable elliptical orbit around the Sun. But that's not the whole story, is it? For a start, Newton was only mostly right. You have to correct for Einstein's general relativity, which makes a small but important difference. And then there's the other planets. They all gravitationally influence each other a tiny amount, Jupiter particularly. 
So in 1989, astronomer Jacques Lascar simulated the solar system over the next billion years, factoring in all of these small effects, and found that over those timescales, the solar system is in fact chaotic. He said an error of 15 metres in the position of the Earth today would make it impossible to predict where the Earth would be in its orbit in a hundred million years' time. In 2009, Lescar and his colleague Gastineau did two and a half thousand solar system simulations with identical initial conditions, except that they changed the starting position of Mercury by one metre each time. That tiny difference amplified over hundreds of millions of years into wildly different states of the solar system. Most of them were unremarkable, but in a few of the simulations, Mercury shifted into a completely different orbit and collided with Venus. In one simulation, Mars was sent hurtling towards the Earth. And it's not just a problem with numerical simulations. Over these timescales, the solar system itself really is unstable. As Lascar put it, shifting your pencil to the other side of your desk today could change the gravitational forces on Jupiter enough to shift it to the other side of the sun a billion years from now. The butterfly effect again, on a grand scale.